Hello and welcome to In Depth. I'm Tina Jha. Over the past few days, large parts of Bihar and several areas in Uttar Pradesh have been reeling under severe floods due to excessive rainfall. A similar situation was witnessed in Mumbai last month, where heavy downpour and massive water logging caused mayhem. Close to 150 people have been reported to have lost their lives in rain-related incidents across the country in recent weeks. A few months ago, more than three dozen people died in one of the longest heat waves in the country, with temperatures reaching 48 degrees Celsius. Such extreme weather events caused by climate change have triggered warnings from scientists that severe rainfall, hailstorms, heat waves, cyclones and droughts are only going to increase in frequency and intensity in the coming years. Not just in India, such extreme weather events have been witnessed globally too, making it the most pressing issue in the present times. Today in depth, we talk about the devastating impact of climate change worldwide, in particular in our country, and how governments the world over are struggling to minimize the impacts caused by climate change. Prime Minister Narendra Modi's speech at the recent United Nations Climate Action Summit displayed his seriousness about climate change. The Prime Minister, touted as the champion of the earth, emphasized his renewable energy and water conservation goals, promoted the International Solar Alliance, praised the newly announced Coalition for Disaster Resilient Infrastructure and talked about the country's plans to ban single-use and disposable plastics. The Prime Minister has time and again spoken about India's commitment to fighting climate change, even though it is not amongst the biggest emitters. In this report, let's take a look at, uh, at what India is doing to fight this very global problem. The time for talking is over. The world needs to act now. Prime Minister Narendra Modi urging the world to step up and act as world leaders met at the United Nations Climate Action Summit to discuss ways to fight climate change, India was portrayed as an important actor and fundamental partner in international efforts on climate action. UN Chief Antonio Guterres praised the country for making a fantastic effort to grow its renewable energy basket. We believe that an ounce of practice is worth more than a ton of preaching. Hum Bharat mein ke fuel mix mein non-fossil fuel ke hisse daari badha rahe hain. Hum 2022 tak renewable energy mein apni capacity ko 175 gigawatt tak le ja rahe hain. और आगे हम इसे 450 गीगावॉट तक ले जाने के लिए प्रतिबद्ध है। Someone asked me the other day, doesn't all of this make you despair? My answer was a clear and resounding no. I am hopeful, and I am hopeful because of you. This is not a climate talk summit. We have had enough talk. This is not a climate negotiating summit because we don't negotiate with nature. This is a climate action summit. In a first of its kind symbolic gesture towards the fight against climate change, India recently contributed a 50 kilowatt Gandhi solar park at a contribution of about $1 million. The solar park consists of 193 solar panels installed on the roof of the UN headquarters, one panel each for every 193 UN member states. With the gesture, India highlighted its willingness to go beyond the talk on climate change and climate action. In a big push towards renewable energy, India also established the International Solar Alliance along with France in 2018. 
The initiative to establish ISA took place at the 2015 Paris Climate Convention. The initiative reflected the need for a cohesive and robust global body which could meet the twin goals of adaptation as well as integration of energy resources along with climate change. India has also ratified the Paris Climate Agreement that seeks to limit the Earth's warming to below 2 degrees Celsius. Even though India has not agreed to cap emissions like other developing nations, Prime Minister Modi did pledge to bulk up on renewable power and reduce emissions relative to GDP by roughly a third from 2005's emissions by 2030. A large part of India's energy comes from coal, with renewables making up only 3%. The International Energy Agency says that the country is second to only China in terms of coal production and the largest importer of coal before 2020. That's why India's pledge to invest $100 billion in clean energy over the next five years is significant. So why is India at the forefront of climate action even though the responsibility ought to lie with the biggest polluters? Well, that's because the most affected must be willing to act first. Globally, climate action has been mitigation-centric with most programs aimed at slowing down future global warming. However, one has to understand that mitigation is more important to developed countries and for countries like India, the focus should be on adaptation. So how are we adapting? With greater number of floods and droughts, there is also an increased need for interlinking of rivers. And the Modi government has always favoured interlinking. Now it must see it as going beyond water security and in the light of climate action. Another adaptive measure is genetically modified crops, which is a major component of climate smart agriculture. Drought-resistant crops and crops that produce more on the same patch of land are the need of the hour. There is scepticism surrounding genetically modified crops, but the technology has been in use globally for over two decades, so India must adapt. The government's Ujwala Yojana is also a big step in the fight against climate change as it has replaced conventional wood-burning stoves with more efficient gas stoves. India accounts for just 4.5% of the world's greenhouse gas emissions, but is at a greater risk of flooding and high temperatures. That is why the country also has a greater incentive to slow global warming. With inputs from Lina Sharma, Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. We'll take a very short break here, but on the other side, we'll talk about the devastating impacts of climate change. Do stay with us. Welcome back, you're watching In Depth. The India Meteorological Department has predicted that the withdrawal of the southwest monsoon from western Rajasthan, already delayed by a month, is unlikely to begin until the second week of October. It has forecast excessive rainfall over Bihar, eastern Uttar Pradesh, Jharkhand, as well as the plains of West Bengal. With the withdrawal of the monsoon delayed, rainfall continues in several parts of the country and has claimed 150 lives so far in just recent weeks. Scientists warn that such extreme weather events triggered by climate change will become more common and more acute in the coming years. Climate change has become the most pressing global challenge of the 21st century. From shifting weather patterns that threaten food production to rising sea levels that cause catastrophic flooding. Changes caused by climate change are global and unprecedented. India is among the few countries that are most vulnerable to climate change. The country's ecological and socio-economic systems that are already under tremendous pressure due to rapid urbanization, industrialization and economic development now face additional stress due to climate change. The most visible impact of climate change today is erratic rainfall and extreme weather events like droughts, floods and heat waves that are witnessed in Bihar, Uttar Pradesh and other parts of the country. According to the India Meteorological Department, 2018 was the sixth warmest year in India since the weather office started maintaining records in the beginning of the last century. 11 out of 15 warmest years were during 2004 to 2018. The past decade between 2009 to 2018 was among the warmest and the driest ever 
and include the very rare instances of successive droughts in 2014 and 2015. The same period also saw short bursts of torrential rain that flooded Mumbai in 2005, Uttarakhand in 2013, Kashmir in 2014, Kerala in 2018 and 2019, and large parts of Bihar that is still reeling under heavy rainfall and subsequent flooding. This climate change is strictly a major change in the weather pattern. What we observed say 30, 40 years back and what we are observing now, if there is a change in the weather pattern consistently for say one or two years, then we can say that there is an effect of climate change. That is one. Second thing is that climate has an intrinsic quality that it will change. Climate of the earth has never been same and it has changed. Earth has undergone several cold and warm phases earlier also. So the geologists they know that considering the age of the earth, the climate has always been changing. Now the main concern is that it is showing perceptible change in our lifetime. The southwest monsoon arrived late this year in Mumbai, leaving it relatively dry for a month. But the rainfall the city received within the span of just two days was what it normally gets in the entire month of June. Intermittent rains choked the city once again, throwing normal life out of gear. As per government data, more than 2,400 people died in India due to extreme weather events in the last one year mainly due to cyclonic storms, flash floods, landslides, cloudbirds, etc. What happened in Patna and other places also, now you know that this much millimeter of rain has occurred and your drainage system was not enough to prevent that. And all your hospitals, universities, major institutions were flooded. Bombay gets flooded. Because Bombay is near sea and your sea level is there. That is the lowest level where the water can drain itself. And due to high tide and excessive flood, the Bombay gets entire, entirely flooded because of the rains. So the only thing is the proper urban planning. Just like Japan, every day you have hundreds of earthquakes, major and minor, but no building collapses because their buildings have been designed as per the norms. Exposure to extreme weather risk is unevenly distributed between states. From heat waves to flash flooding, India has seen intense weather conditions in recent months. While portions of southern and northern India were fighting with drought-like situation in the summer season, the northeast and western coastal regions were battered with torrential downpour. Researchers have already assessed the impact of climate change on agricultural productivity. It's been found that yields from rice, which is one of the main crops in India, is experiencing larger declines due to extreme weather conditions. A World Bank report released in June said climate change could cost India 2.8% of the GDP and lower living standards of nearly half of its population by 2050. Another report cites climate change will widen the inequality gap in the country. People exposed to natural hazards in low-income regions are seven times more likely to die and six times more likely to be injured or displaced compared to equivalent populations in high-income regions. The United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change has also warned that global warming is occurring faster than anticipated and if steps are not taken to cut down emissions, it will continue to have devastating impacts. If you look at the, all the areas of India, Time and often, they experience such floods due to rains, not due to rivers. If you remember a few years back, you had Chennai flooded. Still a few years back, Vishakapatnam airport was closed for several days. Rajasthan flooded. This year, Nasik flooded, Barodra flooded, and now Patna flooded, Banaras flooded. So if you look at the India map, Almost every region of India, some time or the other, get excess rains. Ice is melting worldwide, especially at the Earth's poles. 
This includes mountain glaciers, ice sheets covering West Antarctica and Greenland as well as the Arctic sea ice. Much of this contributes to rise in sea levels. Global sea levels are rising 0.13 inches, that is about 3.2 millimetres every year, and the rise has been occurring at a faster rate in recent years. Nature is angry, and we fool ourselves if we think we can fool nature, because nature always strikes back, and around the world, nature is striking back with fury. Rising temperatures are also affecting wildlife and their habitats. Various species have become extinct or collapsed by almost 90% or more as a result of rising temperatures. Precipitation has increased across the globe, yet some regions are experiencing more severe drought, increasing the risk of wildfires, lost crops and drinking water shortages. Changing temperatures have also led to some species like mosquitoes, ticks, jellyfish and crop pests to thrive. Their booming population is increasing the risk of diseases in animals and humans, as well as devastation of plants and forests. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Long ago, the extreme weather disparities like erratic rainfall, droughts, floods and heat waves may have been solely blamed on nature. But now, science has established that human-induced climate change is playing a major role. India is the 14th most climate change affected country in the world. In fact, the increasing number of instances of extreme weather events in the country have deepened concerns about the impact of climate change. The new World Bank report warned that overall 600 million Indians will be moderately or severely affected by changes in temperature and rainfall. For countries like India, climate change is not just an environmental concern but also the biggest developmental challenge. The world over, extreme weather is impacting the economic performance and lives of millions of people. India is potentially one of the nations that, given its huge population and poverty, could be significantly affected. By 2020, pressure on India's water, air, soil and forests is expected to become the highest in the world. No country is immune to climate change, but India is particularly vulnerable. The Environment Ministry estimates that in 2018-19, as many as 2,400 Indians lost their lives to extreme weather events like floods and cyclones. Scientists say that rising temperatures are playing a significant role in India, triggering extreme weather events. The Indian Meteorological Department estimates average temperatures have increased in India by 0.6 degrees Celsius between 1901 to 10 and 2009 to 18. The World Bank says climate change could push up average temperatures in India to 29.1 degrees Celsius by the end of the century, up from the current 25.1 degrees Celsius. Some parts of India are more vulnerable to climate change. Average temperatures in the last decade rose nearly 1 degree Celsius in Rajasthan, Gujarat, Tamil Nadu, Kerala and the Northeast, compared to the historical average in the 1950 to 1980 period. If you look at the monsoon rainfall for the country as a whole for the past 100 years, it shows that there is no such significant trend in monsoon rainfall during past June to 30th September for the country as a whole. That means the monsoon rainfall for the country as a whole is trendless, it is random in nature, it shows large scale inter annual variations. This trend in increase of extremely heavy rainfall or very heavy rainfall activity is found over the central part of the country, starting from Odisha to Maharashtra and Gujarat, as well as Uttar Pradesh and Bihar. It is attributed that this change in extreme rainfall activity is mainly due to the impact of global warming or climate change. Central districts are the most vulnerable to climate change because they lack infrastructure and are largely agrarian. For these districts, the World Bank suggests that GDP per capita could shrink nearly 10% by 2050 because of climate change. The Economic Survey 2018 also said climate change is taking a toll on India's agricultural productivity and farmers' incomes. 
Extreme temperatures and droughts shrink farmer incomes by 4 to 14 percent for key crops. Poorer farmers in regions with weaker infrastructure and less irrigation are the most affected. In industries like construction, high temperatures can make life miserable for workers and decrease their productivity. Climate change is also manifesting itself in the rise in extreme hot days that have temperatures exceeding 35 degrees Celsius across Indian cities. For instance, in Delhi, the number of days where temperatures have crossed 35 degrees Celsius has increased to 1613 in this decade from 1009 in 1959 to 1968. Other major cities like Mumbai, Bengaluru and Hyderabad have also seen similar increases. In cities there are epicenters of economic activity, rising temperatures increase spread of diseases and hurt productivity. A study published in the journal Energy and Environment Science revealed that climate change may even leave India without enough water to cool power plants in the near future. A link was found between rising temperatures and changing rainfall pattern on crucial tropical crops like banana. According to a study, climate change may lead to a significant decline in banana production in India. India is the world's largest cultivator and consumer of the crop. We can protect ourselves from the changing weather by making ourselves aware of the impact of climate change on various types of extreme weather, by making ourselves aware of the information about the monitoring and forecast and warning services being provided by the early warning service providers like India Meteorological Department, Central Water Commissions, etc., and taking the immediate actions as per the prescribed guidance from various government and non-government agencies to save ourselves. According to the Global Climate Risk Index, released by Germany-based think tank German Watch, India is the 14th most climate change affected country in the world. In terms of global greenhouse gas emissions, India's share remains significantly lower than those of both the US and China. While much of India's climate change crisis is a result of outside forces, there are domestic drivers as well. For instance, the country still overwhelmingly relies on coal for electricity, the emissions from which contribute significantly to climate change. Similarly, inefficient agricultural policy encourages excessive water use, which aggravates monsoon variations. With inputs from Lena Sharma, Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. So that's it from us today in depth. We'll be back same time tomorrow with a comprehensive view on some other subject. In case you missed the television broadcast of the program, you can watch it online on YouTube and Twitter. Further, you can also send in your feedback and suggestions about the program. Thank you for your time.